Hi everyone, welcome back. I've been working on a really long video for a few weeks and it's just gonna take a bit longer. So I thought I would just in the meantime, do a quick little video talking about some of my favorite things currently and all the physical media stuff that I like. So what has been keeping me entertained? Well, firstly, I'll talk about a few records that I have bought myself. I got two recently. First one is Shame. It's Drunk Tank Pink. It's this English post-punk band that came out with this new album at the start of this year and is currently one of my favorites of 2021. Post-punk has always been a genre that I've enjoyed but I've just never fully consciously realized it is a genre I enjoy if that makes sense. Like I've always loved Interpol. They're one of my favorite bands of all time. So I have listened to post-punk here and there but I'm just slowly starting to realize I actually love so many current post-punk bands. Like Parquet Courts really started that for me. Maybe a few years ago now I really discovered Parquet Courts and I started to love Idols last year and now Shame. It's been really fun for me to discover more music from this genre and start saying it's one of my favorite genres. This final, when I bought it, the guy at the front desk also gave me like this poster that is signed by the band and this was a bit of a surprise. I didn't expect this. So that was really nice to also get that as well. And then it's also on this pink vinyl as well, which is really nice. And then also I was in JB Hi-Fi in the city, which is like this bigger chain store of electronics and music and movies. However, usually it's a bit overpriced and I'd rather go to like small stores but I was near a JB Hi-Fi and so I just jumped in just to see what they had and just randomly a D'Angelo record popped up for 20 bucks so like what 20 bucks Australian is pretty cheap for a reissue by an artist that's quite well known this is the live jazz cafe in London show that he did so essentially the reason why it was only $20 is because there's a creased cover so there's just like this little line in the corner here and it's so faint so like I was like what where and my friend had to be like I think it's it's this line up here I was like oh my god you're totally right the fact that this is so cheap just for this little line across the cover is ridiculous like I would buy this a million times over for 20 bucks with just a little crease across the top because I really don't care about that like I just want to listen to some music the only thing that stops me from getting more and more records is the price so if I can find an album that has some music I like and it's cheap I'm getting it as long as the record's good also a double LP of an artist I love once again I want to own more D'Angelo He's probably, after Erica Badu, my favorite neo soul artist. He started making waves in the 1990s with most of his releases. So this was recorded in 1995, September 14th. And then he also released The Black Messiah, I think it's called, which is this new album. One of my favorite albums of all time. I love this new album, but his old stuff, his 1990s stuff is also great too. So I want to start collecting that. A double LP of D'Angelo from the 1990s, like some music I want to get into. And it's new, it's not even opened. Yes, please. So I also have one other record to show, but it's an unboxing. So I want to leave that till the end because I love unboxings. I get so excited about them. It's also my first VCLT. But firstly, before I get to my first VCLT ever, I have some other things to talk about that I'm also really excited about and I'm really enjoying and I want to share. I'm super, 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 super into Yotsuba. It's all I'm doing right now. I'm meant to be reading other things, but all I want to do is pick up some Yotsuba. Yotsuba is a manga. It's like a middle grade manga. It's about this four year old girl that has green hair. You can see there and she's so cute. And it's just about her day to day life. She lives with her single dad and they just hang out, do really cute things. Just do what a four year old would do. And there's like a cast of other characters that also pop in and out of their lives. And she's just essentially really funny. And I've seen people categorize this as like, if you don't like manga, you should give Yotsuba a try. You can't not like Yotsuba. It's so cute. And also the the artwork is pretty brilliant a lot of the time. You'd think that because it's a middle grade series that it's not going to be like that detailed or that beautiful, but it's actually so nice. And as an adult, I can read it and really thoroughly enjoy myself. This also really contrasts nearly all other manga that I currently read or have read. Like all I've really read is like Death Note and Akira and Saga. Saga's not a manga, but it's like a comic series and I want to 
get around to Berserk. So it's just like all this really dark material for adults, like 100% this is all for adults. And then to just change it up and read something that's just so light and fluffy and beautiful and cute and super funny, like I laugh out loud reading this, is the best thing ever for me. Uh, I just finished volumes 9 and 10. I'm reading volumes 11 and 12 currently. I think there's another three volumes out after these ones. There's 15 in total currently. So I sort of just want to get up to where the series is currently released and then stop for a little bit and then come back to it later. But I think it will be ongoing and keep going past where it is currently released up to. Really enjoying that. That's like my current manga that I'm really enjoying. The other graphic novel or manga I'm currently reading is Akira Volume 5. I'm finally getting around to it. I'm finally reading it. These are really expensive to buy. So I just got this from the library. I just pulled the plug in it and I was like, whatever. I can buy it later when I feel like splurging out $50 on volume 5. But currently I own volumes 1 to 4 and they are borrowed out to my dad. I want him to read them because I think he'll really enjoy them because he really enjoys the movie anime that came out that's based upon the manga. Really excited to finish off this series. I really like Akira. I've talked about Akira a lot on this channel and how much I love it. It is my favorite manga I've ever read. I've only read about four manga series ever but, <laughs> but like that includes like Death Note. So I like this better than Death Note and Death Note's very popular. That's my subjective opinion. They both have their merits, but yeah, I really enjoy this series so much. I've just started this. I'm literally this far in. I started it last night. Follow me on my Goodreads if you want to know how these books go, by the way, because I review everything on my Goodreads. Link will be in the description. Just on my merry way with Akira, working my way through the series, really enjoying myself. And I'm really excited to finish this series, actually, because I want to do a movie reaction on this channel to the actual movie, because the movie's meant to be like this cult classic, like, iconic movie, and I think it's going to be one of my favorite movies of all time. So I'm really excited to provide that opinion of, like, I've read the manga but haven't watched the movie, because there's not many people that are in that boat I think. So yeah I would really like to do like a summary of what I think of the series of the books and then watch the movie maybe in the next few months. Yeah should be fun. Next I want to talk about the CDs I've gotten. I do have a few videos up on my channel that mention CDs but not too much. But yeah I do collect CDs. I have a little CD collection that started when I was very young. It was the first way I ever listened to music when I was like three years old. I would get my So Fresh CDs. If you were a kid in Australia in the 2000s you know what I'm talking about. But yeah I would listen to these like compilation pop music top four style. So fresh CDs. And then eventually I got into more album listening and now I have this little collection. Adding side collection slowly. So I did get The Slow Rush by Tame Impala. I got this for a Kris Kringle present for Christmas last year. This is one of my favorite albums of the last few years. I really enjoy it. I have this on record already so now I have the record and CD which is fun. And Tame Impala is this act run by Kevin Parker, this Australian dude. And this stuff is essentially like psychedelic pop, psychedelic rock depending on what album you're checking out. I still have this ticket actually to go see them live which I was meant to see them live at the end of 2020 but it's being postponed to the end of this year so hopefully that still happens and doesn't get cancelled. I would love to see a tour for this album. Hopefully that happens at the end of this year and until then I've got this little CD and the record to keep me company so it's nice to have this in my collection and I also got a few things just from the downstairs exchange library we have in my apartment building. Mostly it's for books so you put a book in and you can take another book but they also have CDs so I picked up a few CDs that I thought were interesting. So firstly, I got a bunch of Ministry of Sound stuff just because I used to love this stuff growing up. Like I was such a fan of like these clubber guides. So essentially they just have like a lot of different electronic dance music remixes to really popular songs. For instance, they have like Lola's Theme by The Shapeshifters, which is one of my favorite dance songs of all time from the 90s, but it's just like a updated instrumental version of it or something like that. So they've just got a lot of random electronic music on these things. And that's why I like them because I like to discover new music randomly. It's sort of like a lucky dip with these types of stuff and I just listen through them and I have a lot of fun discovering some new music. What I used to mostly do was listen to a lot of the Ministry of Sound hip-hop compilation albums, 1990s, 1980s rap classics and they would put them all on these CDs by the Ministry of Sound. That was really fun for me to do. Yeah I just really like the Ministry of Sound. I think they've got like a good taste overall and usually I always find like a couple of really good songs that I really like when I listen through one of these. I would love to also find some more hip-hop compilations because those were my favorite stuff that would come from Ministry of Sound. Then lastly, I do have some rap. Hello, here we are. It is 
What is this album called? I am so bad with Eminem. I only listen to like the songs that like people put on at like parties or something or like that you hear just through like pop culture. But I've never actually listened to an Eminem album. I know there's like one person out there that really wants me to react to Eminem and they keep telling me I should. <laughs> there's only one person right now out of like the thousands of people that watch me. So I don't know if that merits a whole entire video about him. But I decided to pick up an Eminem album just because when I saw it, I thought of that person. I was like, I owe it to them to at least pick up this album. Them. It's right there. It's for free and they won't stop commenting. So <laughs> this is called the Marshall Mathers LP I have heard of that before. It's got the real Slim Shady, which is a really great song I like that song the way I am and Stan. I don't think I've heard those songs this song My name is that's like one of my favorite songs ever. I love that song by Eminem So I do feel like I've got potential to really like him I just gotta check him out and listen to some more stuff and I think I've just seen this album cover around it was like mm, I should probably listen to this album. This is like my first Eminem thing that I have ever owned. So this is the start of a journey, hopefully, with me and Eminem. Yeah. So those are all the CDs I got. Now I want to talk about my novels that I'm reading, not manga or graphic novels. So firstly, I am making my way through the Lord of the Rings series. Like I said in my last reading video, I am doing it. I read the first book and I really liked it. A no spoiler review. Overall, I just thought it was really fun. Like the adventure and quest side of it was really fun. I really enjoyed that part. I thought that there was one slow part in the middle. If anyone knows what I'm talking about, like if you've read the book, there is just like like this 40 page saga of conversation that is just a little bland and boring for me and I think it just repeats stuff that like can just be told through the actual story itself rather than explaining it through characters saying it. Apart from that I thought that the first book was amazing, perfect, all the characters are lovely and essentially I just had a lot of fun in the Lord of the Rings world. I just did. I can't deny it. I just couldn't stop reading it, couldn't put it down and I specifically listened to this audiobook which is free and it's online. I think it's fan made and it was it was about 18, 17 hours long and I just listened to that because I had not just character voices but also had ambience, so sounds of the surrounding environment of the characters, I had music. It was great, this audiobook. It's probably my favorite audiobook I've ever listened to and I highly recommend it if you want to read Lord of the Rings but maybe you're not so great with big books, dense books or fantasy. It helped me a lot not to only just get through the book but also to like really enjoy it a lot more than if I just like read it because I felt like I could really have more of a, at least an audio understanding of the world and that helped with the visual understanding. I'm someone that's never seen the movies so it just helped a lot to visualize the whole entire thing and actualize it in my mind listening to the audiobook because I could tell for instance like Gandalf in that book probably sounds like the Gandalf in that movie. I can't imagine Gandalf sounding any other type of way. He's got to have that old man voice. The first book was like a 4 or a 4.5 out of 5. I really enjoyed it so now I'm reading the second one and I am about this far through so I've read about the first like quarter or so. I'm enjoying this as well. This book is a little bit different because you're dealing with a few different storylines that are happening concurrently while the first one it was just the one storyline so that's a little different but I'm getting used to it. Then I've also got the third one here but honestly I'm just taking this quick break from these to read Yotsuba. That's just how I'm feeling at the moment but I will probably get back to the audiobook of the second one quite soon after I get through Yotsuba and Akira. Yeah! It's just so great to finally be reading Lord of the Rings and actually understanding what all the hype is about. And then the other book that I also recently purchased that I haven't talked about yet is called The New Me by Hayley Butler, I think it's called. And it's just about her in this mononymous job surrounded by people she doesn't really connect with. She's really reserved, very quiet. And it's about her trying to discover what life is to be for her, I guess. Like what is the purpose of what she's doing? It's quite a short book and it sort of gives me the convenience store woman vibes, which is another book I really enjoyed that I read about a year ago. So I saw this in the bookstore and I just felt like because I really like the convenience store women thought I would pick this up and this could be like my 2021 read that had the same themes going on apparently it's like a dark comedy so yeah I think I'm gonna like this just because of the similarities here and it's essentially just following a young woman in life trying to figure out what her vision is what her vision should be because you know I can relate to that look at me what am I doing right now I'm talking about a book on a YouTube channel. Next to the video games I've been really into, I've only been into one video game at the, oh, two video games actually. Firstly, the video game I own, Just Dance. I've got Just Dance 1, 2, and 3 here. I used to play them all the time when I was younger on the Wii. And so I still have these games. And so recently I picked it up again just to get some more exercise into my situation, into my life. I love dancing. I dance a little bit here and there on my channel, but you can see when I do dance, like how much I love it, how naturally it comes to me. 
I guess. I just, I love free flow dance. But the great thing about this is that it's dance, which I love, but it's also a workout. So I've just been doing this a lot to, you know, keep up with my exercise and also dance a bit more. I love dancing. And I've also been playing this other game with my boyfriend and it's called Let's Go Pikachu, I think. I'm not a huge Pokemon guru. I don't totally understand the Pokemon world like at all, but my boyfriend is obsessed with Pokemon. He can name you like the first 700 Pokemon that ever came out in like order. It's weird. And so I decided that I would play this game with him to try and understand Pokemon a bit better because I always force him to get into whatever I'm getting into because I'm very assertive like that. But, <laughs> but I thought I would try and get into something that he's into even though it's like super nerdy, but it's fun. Honestly, it's really fun. I am getting into it, low-key enjoying it actually. I think that there's a lot of interesting parts to it. Like a lot of it is just like collecting stuff. If you can't tell, I love collecting stuff. And Pokemon's sort of the same thing. You're just like, collecting different Pokemon. So I'm having a lot of fun with that. It's a huge franchise. Like Pokemon's absolutely massive. So I just thought I would get into it, play something with him. So we're playing through this game at the moment, trying to 100% it, I think. And we're only about like five to 10% in. It takes a very long time to do this game properly. Pokemon, look at all this new stuff I'm doing. Eminem, Pokemon, Lord of the Rings. I'm essentially becoming a white teenage boy. And then lastly, this unboxing. So this unboxing, it is a VCLT and it is from Christina at The Vinyl Guru, one of my friends in the vinyl community. She's so lovely. I love talking to her. Such a big heart. And she wanted to send me something that she thought I would enjoy. She's literally the first person to ever send me something in the vinyl community, which is totally fine. I expected no one to ever send me anything, honestly. I'm totally fine over here on the other side of the world just by myself because it actually costs so much money to send things over from the other side of the world. A majority of people in the VC are from like Canada, Europe or North America or South America and Australia just happens to be on the other side of the world. It's not the best for shipping prices and so I'm just really thankful for Christina for sending this because she didn't just pay for the record. She paid for some really expensive shipping as well. So thank you Christina. I'm really excited to open this. My first VCLT. I'm so excited. Let's do it. Ah! Okay, okay. Oh my god. Ah! Oh my god, I'm so excited. I have no idea what it is. I have no idea what it is. Ah! <laughs> why am I so scared? Oh my god, why is there another layer? What are you doing to me, Christina? What the hell, man? Ah! Finally got enough confidence to open it up and see what it is. I took it out. There's another layer and I gotta do it all again. Okay, let's go, let's go, let's go. This is so exciting. It's so much more exciting, actually. Like this, I get why people do PCLTs all the time. I've been missing out on so much and I will continue to miss out on so much because I still live over here in Australia. Oh God. She really looked after this thing, dude. This thing's gonna be like in such good condition. Okay, okay, okay. What is that? I don't recognize that. What is this? What is it? Why is there so many layers? No, 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 no. It's new or Christina! No, 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 no. <gasps> One thing at once, I'm too excited. So this, it's sealed mint condition like a new record. So I know this is, this is Marauder. Oh my God, it's Marauder. Oh my God. Interpol's newest record. Wait, no, where's my, where's, oh! Where did I put it? Christina, I'm sweating. You know I had to do it. You know I had to do it. Here it is. It's my iconic Marauder hoodie that I always wear. And now I have the Marauder. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Christina. Okay, so let me try and like actually be understandable. So this is my Marauder hoodie. I saw Interpol live for the first time, like my second favorite band of all time. I saw them live a year or two ago with my dad and sister, and we went and saw them for their Marauder tour. And so I don't actually own, I didn't own Marauder on record, but I bought this really expensive ass hoodie when I went and saw them live. So I always had this hoodie, but I didn't have the record. And so she, Christina, you must know, you know that I have I have this hoodie. I love this hoodie. I wear it all the time. She's like, we've got to get the matching record. She's genius. Oh my God. And it's, it's new. Oh my God. She's so lovely, man. She's, oh, I'm shaking. Okay. So let's look inside. <gasps> oh, it's red. It's red on the inside. I'm obsessed with that. Thank you. Thank you, Christine. You're so lovely and it's got all the lyrics as well. You knew I would know everything about this. So like I can be like, ah! but then you also got me something that I sort of know about, but I don't totally know about. So this is interesting because this next thing, wow, wow. Okay. Oh my way. 
I literally have the wardrobe for this unboxing right now. I have Christina's back right now. Like, I've got you covered. So now I've got what I was originally wearing. But this is New Order, Touched by the Hand of God, which I have not listened to this. And I did, I did not own this, obviously. I want to collect all that Joy Division. But I also would love to collect all the New Order. This totally makes sense. So New Order is the band that was born out of Joy Division after Ian Curtis, Joy Division's frontman, died. So I... I'm really excited to own this. I can tell that she's owned this for a while. I would love to know what's the story of this record. Like how she got it, how long has she had it for, where's it come from. So I just did a quick Google search just because I've actually never, I know New Order. Like I listen to Blue Monday. <laughs> I love Blue Monday. But apart from that, I haven't really dived into other New Order. I just stick to my boys here. You know what I mean? But I would love to delve further into New Order. And so I just checked this out. This is a 12 inch single from 1987. I'm so happy with this. Thank you so much, Christina. I'm so excited to own a 12-inch single from New Order, Touched by the Hand of God. Let's do this. Uh, this is just amazing. Such a beautiful combination because a lot of influence from Interpol comes from Joy Division. So these sort of connect to each other, which I see. I see I see what you did there. And I'm just so I'm just so touched by my first VCLT. This is just so nice. Thank you so much. That's it. That's all I've got to show today. Remember to comment and like and subscribe and let me know what you're into currently from any of these medias or any other type of media that you want to talk about with me because I love all different types. I'll see you soon with the more intense video that I've been planning for like a month now. Hopefully it'll be up next week. That's the plan. Bye!